wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for the fourth episode of What the Fuck is an NFT? I'm Christian Shaw, your host. And with Robert Neal. Robert Neal. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> no problem. So today, uh, I desperately am itching to figure out about NFT communities. Okay. So, um, so I've just bought my first NFT last week or a couple weeks back. I'm starting to get, you know, understanding like what this can do for me, my, my business, um, what this can do for the world. I'm starting to like, like get it. Um, and now I just want to like continuously continue to learn with other people who are, who are like-minded, who are doing interested in the same things as me. And I know that there's lots of pockets in different communities uh, with, with different, you know, all, all areas, all sides of the spectrum from art to music to, you know, different types of NFTs. So I would say, is there a community built around like every, every fast, like what, where, where do we, where do we find NFT communities? Let's start there. Okay, so one one of the things I've learned, so as always, I will give a long-winded answer to a short question. (laughs) But in general, what I've learned is that uh, I tend I tend to speak in principles. So there's this book I read when I was 18 called uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And at the end of the book was just uh, he just gave you like core principles like how to live life because what ends up happening is the environment you find yourself in is always changing. It's always like moving around, but the principles, the core things that are true, those are the things you can latch onto. So like in the book, it was like things like uh, begin with the end in mind or seek first to understand when then to be understood. Like those are principles that no matter whatever communication environment, whatever business setting you are in, they will help you out. And so in general, with this NFT stuff with this Web3 crypto stuff, What I try to do is just talk about the principles because like the space is moving so fast. Like you as a little organism trying to like navigate it, like you have to latch on to the principles that are still true, like physics, like gravity is still going to be there no matter how fast things are going. I think even Jeff Bezos says that he's like, I don't care about the things that are going to change. I care about the things that won't change in 10 years. So it's like customers are always going to want certain things. I mean, so I, I think that's like the easiest way to approach this where it's like you learn the principles. So that way, like even as this stuff changes and moves, it's easy to get to. So that, that's the first step, principles, principles, principles. The next step is basically applying that to what you just asked, which is the community thing. So there's this funny tweet. I, I think I may have posted it or someone else did uh, where it's like Web3 is about, uh, <laughs> is both about uh, what's it called? Code that creates communities and communities creating code. And it's actually this weird, interesting thing where it's like, you make code, which then springs up and builds a community around it. And then you make a community which has now the power and capabilities to make code, but not just code, art, media. Now we're seeing organizations, eventually nations. So we're getting this weird thing where it's like, <laughs> you stare into the this and the this stares back into you. You stare into the oh code and the, code, st- the code stares back into you. <laughs> This is getting hella philosophical. Yeah, this, this is hella deep, hella philosophical, but you'll see where I'm going because it's it's going to be like a fun little silly metaphor that you will remember like later on, but I, I have to say it at the beginning for it to make sense. Okay. So in terms of community, you really have to think about what is a community from a first principle. And it's really just a group of people coming together over like-minded ideals. And that is it. What's crazy about Web3 technology is that it makes this move at internet speed. It lets you create community at internet speed. So, but before I get into that, you have to think about the fact that we were already doing this before Web3 technology came around. It's just that now this stuff is just putting everything on steroids. So you have things, simple things like Facebook groups, you have messenger chats, like everything you look at on the internet is really just a group of people. You have little niche subreddits, like all these things are just communities already there. You as a personality on Instagram, you made a community where the community is centered around you. You can have community centered around a single individual. So like Gary V or something like that, or you can have a community center around a topic. Like maybe we all care about anime. And so we form an anime community or like we care about this, like self personal development or uh, what's it called business or like uh, what's it called relationships. Like sure. people form communities around whatever they are interested in. And so you have to think about communities that as just a group of people coming together around 
shared interest, most likely, or shared hate, which I guess is still an interest, <laughs> but it's like a weird way to get around shared interest. Uh, so at, at the end of the day, that, that's all it is. And communities provide a lot of value. Communities have attention, which is a core thing every business needs. Like if I'm trying to, if I'm pitching an anime, I care about talking to this anime community. If, I, if I'm pitching a self-development book, I care about this self-development community. So like creating a community creates a lot of business value, creates a lot of value in general. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Because if, if, like, if, if I'm a creative, let's say I'm on Twitter and I'm just, I'm, I'm a writer and I just have a huge following. Now, when I want to release my book, I have immediate audience to release the book to. Wow. Like I have community. So first, the community hmm? or the, the, the product? <laughs> well, this is the thing. This is the chicken and egg. <laughs> remember my, remember my thing, what I said? Communities creating code or code community creating yeah. communities? Yeah. Right. You see, you're starting to see the principle come back already. Okay. So, but I think that's at the high level. It's just realize a community is just a group of people coming together over some kind of shared ideal and a value of community can be very, like a community can be very valuable. Uh, so now that you have that, next you have Web3, uh, you have Web3 communities. So mm -hmm. the way to think about it is like, there are lots of different types of Web3 communities, but like it follows the same principles as offline communities, the current online community you're already familiar with. It's all principles, principles. Nothing is changing on the principle level. It's just like the new tools and technology we used to do it. You know what I mean? Yes. The principle. Just like I had a, I could have had a church group in mm. offline. Then I could have had an online Facebook church group. And now I can have a Web3 church group around an NFT. Got and it. so what it, it's, yeah, same thing. So shared ideals, shared values, shared interests. Correct. In group. Okay. Correct. And so what happens is Web3 things gives you a lot of superpowers. So if you look at how communities have been evolving over the last few years, there's been a lot of interesting products and tools that have been giving more value and power to communities. So power to the players or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so one thing I really like was uh, something called the public where you, it's like a investment platform where you're letting communities have ownership in products they already like. So there's a product called like Gumroad or something where it's like, it's kind of like you can buy books and like other products. It's kind of like a, not Insta, it's like a, what, Etsy? Yeah, it's like Etsy almost, yeah. but for digital products. But so I really liked it. But like what they did was instead of raising venture capital, they decided to raise from the community. And so Republic and like a bunch of other services like that have been a huge thing where you're letting the communities, the, the users, the like customers, actually own parts of the business itself. Wow. So that's one thing where you're kind of seeing ownership shifting in Web2, where people are trying to own more of the products and services you because like, I'd rather use a product I own than a product I don't. Sure. So that's the yeah. ownership. Uh, next, you see the fact that communities are having more input in terms of what is built. So from simple things, like everyone should honestly just be like, if you're a product manager at any company, you should be talking to your community and seeing what they want to do. But in general, like one small thing is like, I remember I used to really like to ask Gary Vee show. And like, that was just a show where the community is just asking questions and the whole content is around answering questions that the community cares about. You know what I mean, you have a lot of products where the communities are having more input. So you have ownership, input. Uh, what's the third thing that uh, communities are basically doing? I mean, it, I'll, I'll stop going into details, but basically what's happening is we are giving the participants and community more power in the communities that they are part of. Because at the end of the day, all the value is coming from them. Even something like Facebook, where most of the network is built by our content. You know what I mean? Twitter is derived by what we put on there. TikTok is derived by our videos. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you have to realize where there's many scopes for where our community is, and there's many ways participants in the community are contributing to the community. All this, like I said, roundabout way, to like, we're, but we're slowly building a foundation where you're now starting to see communities are everywhere, community participants are everywhere and how they contribute is everywhere. But the amount of power and value they capture is changing and increasing for the better. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so really, this is the narrative I'm painting for you at least. So oh. you're, you're being sold on a story, so. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's 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 pretty revolutionary that the members of the community get to own a piece of the the product or the the community what what the community is 
what, like pe people are now given that opportunity to like actually own a piece of it and like have a say in like they've always had a say kind of but it's always been monopolized by yeah it's been a soft business, power corporation, it's been a soft right? say yeah yeah they had so a soft, you know. that's the thing with web3 where it's like it's basically that at a hundred percent like all the other communities web3 communities it's like soft power and like maybe a little bit of a say web3 communities start off as 100 so like think about the nft you bought yesterday with that nft or last, well, so, last week Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, not, oh, not yesterday, last, last week, last, last two episodes ago. Yeah, two episodes ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. don't shoot it out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the NFT you bought two episodes ago, you are now part of a community. So mm -hmm. basically someone created code and then people form the community around that code. And then now that community yeah. can go out and make and do stuff with it. What community am I a part of? I, I You're a part of the ENS community. So you oh. bought an e ENS NFT, so and now you are part of that community yes and yeah that, that is that is basically it and that is what nfts can allow you to do at the, at the core level it's because it's something that is on a blockchain so it's open permissionless and available to everyone just by putting something on the blockchain you automatically have the ability for people to create a community around it so do you see what i'm saying there where like you and I can now go start a community where we just say anyone with an ENS token, because we have it, can come to our little community. That's it. Mm -hmm. We can just use that as a primitive to start mm -hmm. a community. The blockchain lets you use available information on the blockchain. So like how many tokens does someone have? What type of NFTs are in their wallet? Because all this is available to us to bootstrap a community. I can also go by like, hey, who has contributed to this type of thing? Like if you bought this amount of thing, I can create a community about that. And so there are a lot of NFT communities based on just on-chain data. And so that is the first like level of types of communities people are making where it's like something that is on the blockchain, you can make a community. So you can make a community off of if someone holds a token, holds an NFT, mm -hmm. has done a certain transaction, has done a certain action. Uh, we form, I think the Web3 community, we formed a community just to, uh, so those are the first types, this on-chain uh, what's it called transaction but then the next type would be communities formed to do certain actions but because we have all these web3 technologies you can form it really quickly so mm -hmm. what i was about to give was the example of hey back in i think november there was a on-chain community formed to buy a copy of the uh what's it called the constitution? Uh, declaration of independence there you go what was it the constitution thank you oh yeah constitution sorry yeah constitution constitution down why am i here? yeah so there was a community form just to do that and it's basically because of all the Web3 stuff, remember back in like what episode one where we talked about like Web3 gets all these things for free. You get the technology for free, which is like encryption automatically. You get finance for free. You have the entire DeFi ecosystem. You get art and media for free. And so like me coming in as a community, I can just click a couple buttons and make a community where I now have a NFT project. So that's like a media thing, but I also have an entire financial ecosystem. I have photography automatically baked in and I can just bootstrap and start from there. Like I, I start like from financial like, ecosystem. You mean people can buy and sell transact. Yes. Right. If I, photography outside is, of an NFT, I couldn't just say, Hey, I want to make a physical, like, I don't know. I have this random sticker. I couldn't just say, Hey, I have a thousand of these. I want to make a community in the physical world around it. You know what I mean? I can't even do that in Web3. I can't just say, hey, I have a Facebook group and I want to make a financial ecosystem around being part of that Facebook group. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But with NFT communities, you get that automatically for free because wow. your community is based on a token you own. So like your NFT you bought, now that is a community, but you can always sell and trade that community. So now you can even start to see the value of the community. There's a financial market to, hey, how healthy is this community? Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes. How healthy is it based on the economic value of the? Correct. Companies? Because you okay. have members can easily trade in and out. Every other Web2 community, I can't trade in and out. Mm -hmm. So like think about something like Netflix. Because my Netflix subscription isn't like an NFT, I can't sell it to you. you know I mean, I, I buy it and I hold it and that's it. Whereas the on-chain, and I think there's a one something by uh, Ashton Kutcher. I think they did something called uh, Stoner Cats. Where it's like you buy an NFT to like be able to watch this TV show. It's like a subscription specifically to this show. Hmm. And so like now you can see what's the economic value of this because how often are people on the trade in and out of this show? It just right. becomes like that. So yeah. Web3 communities, basically they inherit 
cryptography and a bunch of like tech stuff, but they also inherit financial markets for free. They inherit openness and the availability to communicate with anyone on the planet globally. It's just like they start at third base. Mm. Whereas if you try to do the same thing in Web2, you have to pitch, stitch to get a whole bunch of things. So like if I want to let my users own it, I have to use something like Republic. If I want communication, I have to like figure out Facebook groups. If I want like anything you want, you have to stitch together you as the creative, you as the person, a bunch of different things that become really hard to do. Whereas with Web3, you literally, crick, and you did this when I showed you how to make your NFT yourself. Like you, in 10 seconds, you made an NFT, but on the back end, you get all of the Web3 stuff. So all of DeFi, all of the DAO tooling, everything for free. And so it's just, you start your community at third base because you get all the Web3 ecosystem around it for free. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you get all these things for free. Why, why wouldn't you start a community? It sounds like it seems like, <laughs> like yeah, it seems it seems pretty practical to do, or a lot more practical than, you know, what we had to do before, before Web three. Hmm. So you get cryptography, so basically mm -hmm. security, and not, you won't be, like you can't get your NFT stolen or, or any of your goods. Yeah, because stolen. when you make a NFT instead of me making like a like instead of if like if I want to do a subscription type like NFT, like if I'm making like a Netflix subscription similar mm -hmm. Stoner Cats, it's like to do that I have to like basically get some AWS servers and store your passwords and everything else. With an NFT, I make an NFT and I don't have to worry about it because mm -hmm. you are in charge of your own security with your private keys, which is why right. you can't be silly like Chris and sharing it. But <laughs> like the users right. take care of all their security. You don't have to think about servers. You don't even have to think about hosting. Like because mm -hmm. AWS bills get expensive after some time. Like I don't have to think about any of this stuff. Yeah, I basically I just release a token and all the security, all that part is handled for me. It's also handled, how do I distribute this to users? Like, I don't have to think about that. I don't have to make sure you can actually get to my website. Like it's all on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. I pay the money to put it on the blockchain and now the blockchain is the thing. Gotcha. So okay. like, that's the tech side. Then you get the financial side. Right. So go ahead, what were your questions there? So, so now you have the, the security, you have the financial side, so you can transact back and forth and you can see and um, uh, kind of like, uh see the value in real time of mm -hmm. the community and and make your decision on if you want to join this community based on that as well mm -hmm. and then Correct. have the communication which is kind of like common since you know we've, we've had this internet thing for a while now so okay yeah you have those and even that part's being changed as, as we speak like uh there's actually a site you know what maybe you should check it out we could uh, show our users the cool what thing. is it there's a site called our spaces dot xyz i'm pretty sure and no, if you can not. yeah share your screen if you want oh, you, can you, this. you can even <laughs> if not there's a it's easy one we can use our spaces dot why is everything xyz now it's just a thing uh, i think you did you spell that yeah there it is launch the app this is it yeah this is this is it <clears throat> oh i can and now yes yeah yep was it eve uh yeah although that's yourself though so yeah and now anyone can message you uh but you can't i don't know if you can message yourself so you're going to connect wallet so look at this like login's already there you right just hit metamask signs in for you this is easier than facebook login yep <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is what i'm trying to say you you have the tech side you mm -hmm. get for free you have the financial side you get for free the communication side is basically being figured out so you have this app there's another one called block scan but like we're, we're, you're slowly making ways where anyone can communicate with any blockchain wallets. And right now there's like 70 million on Ethereum. Like I would say probably around 100 million total on different blockchain networks. So like you have 100 million people that easily get communication for free. So you as a creative, you as a the user, you're getting a lot of stuff on third base. Like if I want to start a community, it is easier for me to just make an NFT and then rely on all the stuff I get for free than to try and like bootstrap it using Twitter, Facebook, basically anything else. Okay. So, yeah. I want to see, I want to see this community. I want to join. Yeah. It. Click sign in. Okay. Let me see. Sign. I think I can, let me try and send you. There's other ones 
that follow the same approach. There's another one called, uh, I think it's called block scan. <clears throat> okay, so I'm, I'm in explore group chats, message address. Doesn't seem like a whole bunch of stuff going on. Well, it's just a, it's like a WhatsApp. Okay. Oh, interesting. This is just, yeah. So you can message me if you want. You okay. Can just look for me. That's you? Yep, that's me. And those are some of the group chats I'm in. Oh, you these are join. your group chats. Oh, yeah. You can, well, you could message me as well, I'm pretty sure. But uh, some know. of these, so you go back because I don't think you'll be able to join this one. I'm not 100% right. sure. But you can join the ENS one because uh, it has, you have the token to get into it. So if you look for me, it seems a little clunky, not to be nitpicky, but no, it, it is 100% clunky. This is, this is where this is that you're at the cutting edge of uh, Web3 right now, Dang. where the communication layer hasn't been figured out. So we figured out the technology layer. We figured out the finance layer. Mm -hmm. NFTs are figuring out the media layer, but the communication layer, there's a core part around identity that is still being worked out. Mm -hmm. And so right now you can make communities that don't specifically rely on identity. So like things like uh, Airbnb, you could think of as a community. But like that requires a reputation system, like how good of a host you are. Right. Oh, I think I got your message. This is exactly like WhatsApp. This is so fun. Yeah, this is literally WhatsApp. There's another one. If you open up a new tab, I'm pretty, actually, it, it's actually now integrated. So if you go to etherscan.io. Oh, wait, are I remember this. Uh, and if you just uh, search my name, that's even easier. And just click on my address. And then you see that B with the eight next to it, next to my address, that look right next to it's the right of it. There's a little click that. Blocks. And I, yep, it's just another WhatsApp chat. Wow. Okay. So this is the communication element of. So this is the cutting edge of the communication element. So, but the problem is these are early days until reputations really figured out. All mm -hmm. you can really have is like WhatsApp type things. Over time, you can start getting things like a Snapchat and things like that. But right now, this is the this is the edge of uh, where communication's really been figured out. Gotcha. So, yeah. So that, that kind of like gets to like at a first principle, you kind of see like Web three communities give you a lot of privileges that you don't have to like hack together yourself as you would in a Web two community. But then it's just what can your community do using Web three technology becomes also more interesting as well. Right. What can your community do? Okay. So you have the fact that if you go back to the Constitution DAO example, where all it was was a group of people said, hey, guys, we'd like to buy a physical asset that's worth a couple mil hundred million, however many million dollars it was. I think it was like $10 million at the time. Mm -hmm. And they were able to raise money quickly because Web3 communities get Kickstarter for free because we, you could just send Ethereum to people. You know what I mean? Like Kickstarter is built mm -hmm. into the product. Yeah. So you have Kickstarter built in, you have messaging built in, you have all these things that are built in. So now you're giving, you're getting financially empowered communities as well. People who can buy assets and make stuff happen. Yeah, the more you talk about this, the more you talk about the communities and the financial elements of it and all this stuff, the more the reputation side of the thing that, you, that you're just referencing comes into play with like, that's Correct. super important. That's why that is, that is the cutting edge of Web3 where I think there's these, there's two, there's like three approaches to like reputation. It, it's basically one is no <laughs> reputation. Don't worry about it, <laughs> figure it out later. Uh, or at least something like off chain. Next is on chain reputation. So it's like, I can look at your transaction histories. I can look at the NFTs you have. You have non-transferable like badges that I can like add to you. And then the third one is uh, what's it called? Decentralized IDs with verifiable credentials. Those are kind okay. of the three I don't know what, I don't know, I yeah, you don't even know what any of those are because we're not, but, I think reputation and identity is going to be a whole nother talk we can talk about. Yeah. But in general, if you look at the primitives and like the first principles of creating a community, so like 
you understand the communities or shared ideals. You look at how you go about creating a community. If you try to do a physical world, you have to like find a bunch of people and be in the same location. It's kind of hard. Just, uh, if you try to do it in the Web2 world, you can do it easily, but you have to patch together a lot of things from the tech side, the finance side, and the communication side. You have to patch all those together. Interesting. With Web3's community, you kind of get all those for free. Okay. And then you also get the added benefit of like the, uh, what is it called? You get the emerging properties of those things all being there for free. What does that mean? The emerging oh, emerging properties. It's like there's this thing called systems theory where it's like when you start off with just like individual atoms, it's hard to see Facebook. You know what I mean? But Facebook is an emerging property of an atom because atoms eventually create molecules, which eventually create like uh, what's called cells, which eventually creates organs, which creates you. And then your thoughts and the networks you form eventually creates. Facebook, you know what I mean? Like okay. humans thoughts. But it's like me, if I was making atoms, like I was the person in charge of making atoms, I was God or whatever. Like it becomes hard to see something like Facebook. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's pretty hard to predict. And that's all it is. So there's a lot of things that like, when you start off with a new bunch of primitives, it becomes hard to create, predict all these new emergent things. Cause like you're giving 10 year old the same financial powers that people needed billions of dollars for right now. Like any 10 year old has the abilities that like you didn't have 10 years ago. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. with this web three stuff. So I can, me get a group of my friends who we were playing Minecraft before. Now we can make a bunch of money on it. And now we don't even need bank accounts. We can just make money. You're giving 10 year olds bank accounts. So that's the first part. We can talk to anyone. We can raise money. Like no one will even needs to know that we're 10. We can do all this for free. We have the entire wall street together. Me and my group of 10 year olds, like mm -hmm. once we have more time, like, there are yeah, going to be things true. that we're not thinking about that 10 year olds are going to come up with because we've just given them financial capabilities. The power. Yeah. Yeah. It's the power. And so those are what emerging properties are. So right. starting every 10 year old on the planet at third base is a <laughs> interesting thing. Would you recommend everybody to get like started young to like learn this stuff and like learn these platforms? Like is is that what like what what would you do if you were 10 would would you uh yeah i mean this would be all i would be doing yeah. I would, whatever the thing i like so if i liked minecraft i would be forming a minecraft nft community around mm -hmm. that and we would probably do stuff whether it's like buying atoms but honestly you don't even have to do that like 10 year olds are going to start off with getting to own and make money playing their video games like it doesn't even matter like they're going to be way ahead of us holy shit man they got it so, so yeah. But, I mean, now we talked about like the fundamentals. It's like, what kind of, I think the next thing is like, you, you kind of understand the value of how creating your community is important. Creating your communities using Web3 technology is important. I think then it's like, what are these emergent things that a Web3 community does better than like, or at least does that a Web2 community wouldn't do? And so, go it's, ahead. It's so, it's so hard to kind of even like you were saying the emerging technologies in in of itself is like it's hard to predict like correct what these atoms will create what what kind of uh correct like it's hard to predict facebook from an atom like, right it becomes so, like no human can think that far ahead right so it's it's so mind-bending to like even consider thinking about this stuff like what this it's so like wide open um it's very creative it's very open but I let's jump into the practical right so communities are the the first step into making that like forming those connections and those networks to making these these ideas come true yeah if we're jumping into practical we we all like there are there are a couple of primitives that I, I hope i tried to hit which is like you have to accept that a community is valuable if you don't do that like yeah. there's nothing here so i accept that i think yeah. everybody in correct if you accept it that in business and just in life having a community is valuable because it's a valuable asset then we're good next you have to accept that like hey web three communities give you a bunch of things that you'd have to stitch together and do a lot of work on your own you accept that then we're good next is now thinking about okay i have those two practical things what kind of community do i want to go do you know what i mean yeah so then it just comes down to like what are you interested in how good are your skills in terms of community building so like if you're a developer like me like you probably want to stick to more code related communities or communities around code if you are a salesperson a marketer like you you probably want to stick to more communities around there so that is like the interest level then in terms of like the tech level like 
realizing how the communities can affect whatever you're trying to do. So in terms of like your business, realizing, oh, by making my subscription now into an NFT, mm. I've inadvertently one created a financial market for my system, my what what to call my uh, subscription right. package. Yeah. But I've also now created a community that can just magically form around my subscription product. Like if you open up that op- uh, that rspaces.xyz website, mm-hmm. you can form a community, you can form a group chat based off of like if you click the plus button and just start a new group chat. Mm-hmm. You can, yeah, just call it whatever. You see hats, add EIC 20 requirement. Yeah. Add, those are the standards for NFT. So ERC 721, that is a NFT standard. So now you can make a group chat that only people with a specific NFT can have. Hmm. So like if you have your subscription product, you can now create a group chat just for people who have this product and you can start to form the community. You, do you see what I'm trying to say? Gotcha. So, so I need this ERC 20 token. Correct. At least even even participate in this community. Hundred tokens or one. Right. Token. And you can pick the amount you want, whatever you want. But like, and this is just one website. Like I, I showed you Blockfan. There's like there's a lot of them that are at this primitive level mm-hmm. where it's like you're starting to use the fact that people's wallets have a certain piece of information to form communities around that, form communication networks around that. We're we're all whatever is on your wallet, and eventually I think even just your decentralized ID people are going to form networks, communities around those things. Hmm. So if that makes sense from the practical level, it's just okay. whatever you're currently doing, think about how can you use this new technology to basically give it enhanced powers that you would have had to stitch together from scratch on your own hmm. if you did it using regular Web3. So And realizing that things that weren't assets, things that could never form a community before, now magically can so like I said, the fact that you owned a Netflix subscription before, I mean, maybe you guys could all talk about the memes because you're Netflix people, but now there's like an entire financial ecosystem around it. Now there's going to be group chats just based on the fact that you actually have a Netflix subscription. And this can be for whatever your business is. Like this can be, hey, I am a restaurant. And instead of me doing my, my loyalty points that most restaurants do, you know, those things where like you come here 10 times and you check it off. Yeah. I released that as an NFT. But now that can expand beyond just that. And like that can become like it has internet level distribution, internet level financial markets, internet level communications, and you can form much greater things. Like you, you are now going from Adam to Facebook. You know? Right. Because yeah. there's just like a, yeah. an explosion of common like things that can happen from that primitive now. Definitely. Okay. So concluding thoughts, concluding question here, to end this, uh, this uh, podcast off. Um, should I start a community or should I join one? Uh, How do you well, determine? Like, I would say, were you going to start a community before or were you going to join one before? Before you knew about any of this Web3 thing, were you the type of person who'd want to start a community or were you the type of person who'd want to join one? I'd like to do both. Then I think you should do both. Yeah. That's the best part. You I'm get glad. to do that. Just so any, you're already part of now an ENS community. So find websites like this where you can do stuff back by the fact that you have an ENS token. So that's one. Uh, but then as you think about what you want to do, you can just make a community around your NFT. So Gotcha. Or your token or whatever you want to make. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I still, I'm still kind of curious about how I can actually go ahead and like, how do I start? How, like, how do I start it? Do I go on Discord? Do I like do that? But, uh, but so you have to think about the story. So remember how we start off like communities are formed around shared beliefs or whatever. So mm-hmm. first you start with that. Like what's the thing the community is forming around? So okay. whatever it is, then you think about the communication layer about how do you guys communicate? So that those are your two things. You figure out how do you, what do you, what are your shared beliefs? So the community is going to form around that. And then you figure out a platform that for you guys to all communicate on. Discord's the easiest, but it has a lot of problems there. And I think over time we're gonna find a lot of cooler solutions than Discord, but right. that is probably where you want to start. This is the new frontier for groups for communities. Correct. This how do how do these new Web3 communities communicate, talk to each other? Yeah. It's gonna be on the blockchain. It's not gonna be a Discord or like something off of the blockchain. Unless Discord pivots and ex- embraces right. Web3 technologies a lot more, like right. they're not gonna be the, the go-to place. Because mm-hmm. right now it's just a stopgap solution. You need a place where people can talk and chat. Yeah. And Discord is the easiest because it was already ahead of itself because it was made for gaming. Mm. 
So, and gamers are usually at the ahead of the curve. Wow. But it's still not good enough for like all, like it, it's more second base yeah. <laughs> and like Web3 is at third base and that, that's the problem. So yeah. we're going to just make new communication networks that accept like one, you don't need to sign up with an email and password. You just connect wallet. Like all these little small things that you are just getting for free. Like the fact that this site didn't need to think about users accounts. Like that's a whole development team headache you don't have to think about. I don't have to store users. Like I, I, it's not my problem. The blockchain handles it for me. Wow. So the, these things got to move a lot faster. Okay. <clears throat> well, cool. Maybe uh, next next week we can uh, we can go into a community and like check it out. See see how we can do that on these different these different blocks. Blockchain. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to buy some stuff though. <laughs> All oh, these communities, are? you gotta pay to get you gotta pay to get in. Dang. Okay, how much? Uh, uh actually well, we can go into the ENS community since you have a token. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh yeah, do open it. up Discord. You can go there right now. Or uh, let me... so, so I gotta I gotta end this meeting um or this podcast. I gotta gotta head out. So would you could we can yeah, we, next, time, next time, next time we can add on how do you get into uh, different communities and yes, maybe before I can actually can... add, then I can actually add ETH to my to my wallet and figure yeah, that. Yeah, we may want to buy some other tokens just so you can explore some other communities. Mm, okay, okay, cool. All right, guys, we'll catch you guys on the next episode uh, where we join a community. Bye. All right.